Hello, my name is Dan Harris and I'm the founder and CEO of Neurodiversity in Business. And I'm really delighted to welcome here today, Jane Pierce. Jane is one of the founders of a great organization called Autism Forward. And within Neurodiversity in Business, we're often getting asked very kind of deep technical questions around each particular element of neurodiversity. And I thought it'd be really great to hear what an organization which is very forward looking, Jane. So, Jane, perhaps you'd like to do a more eloquent introduction to yourself. Yeah, I um, um, founded Autism Forward about five years ago. Um, I have a stepdaughter who's autistic and I was very conscious that there is a real cliff edge in support for autistic people when they leave education whether it's university, whether it's college, whether it's school, they're really, you know, there's, 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 this, there's this sort of cliff edge in, in support. And um, myself, my co trustees wanted to be able to do something to sort of bridge that gap to help people with that, one of the most difficult transitions in life anyway, which is that transition from education into employment. And we, we do that by funding one-to-one -one specialist support from mentoring organisations who are independent of us as a charity around the country. And those mentors might be autistic themselves. They've often got an autistic family member and they have experience not only of supporting people into employment, so knowing what you need to do get, get to find a job, to get through the interview, but also to understand, to help people understand how their autism affects them and what um, adjustments they will need to ask for in the workplace. So they so they act as, as a, you know, as a support for the individual and also a bridge into that into that work can often sort of help advising the employer as well and making sure that transition goes as smoothly as possible. Um, since we set up about five years ago, we've supported around 250 people. We are currently supporting about 80 and our um, uh, results are absolutely outstanding. We have on average around, after uh, about a year's support, 85% of the people that we support are either in paid or voluntary employment by, by the end of that, so with about 55 to 60% in paid and the remaining involuntary, which is quite often where they are comfortable being. So um, that's, you know, that, that's remarkable when you compare it to, you know, the, the, the stats that we see sort of typically around 16% of people um, in employment or 32% in some kind of employment. So, um, and we find that one-to-one -one support is really effective, um, really effective at, at really tailoring that support to the individual. And we, so the other half of our work is actually working with employers and gathering together to, to, to really to understand best practice. So tell us a little bit more about how that works and gosh, where, where do you get your funding from as well? That we have some, oh, I've lost you. We have some, sorry, I've lost you. I'm back. Okay. Let's let's just start that again. Let's do that so one again. I'll, do the question again, yeah. Um, so I I've asked the question and then you can respond. So my question was, where do you get your? They're generally people who've got a connection to autism. Um, we've held um, pre-COVID, we held a number of sort of in-person events like um, cycling events where uh, we cycled from um, a shop. We raised um, a considerable amount of money um, on that event and enabled us to. Um, to fund a lot of support. We were lucky enough to get some national lottery funding during COVID. And but generally it's from it's from personal contacts and, and, and fundraising. And we also have an extremely efficient model because we don't have any paid staff within the charity. All of the work is done by self, myself and the other trustees on an entirely pro bono basis. So we have basically zero cost at that level, DWP funded access to work support for people in work. We're only paying for the support they actually actually get um, and the individual will apply to a support um, for a support via one of those um, mentoring organizations that we work with and uh, look maybe in a future podcast we might be able to get someone involved who, who's actually been through that cycle and benefited from your I'd love to hear from them what the, the kind of the user journey is in yeah. terms of finding out about your organization the support and then where they've ended up absolutely yeah um, Jane, if I may, can I ask for your views on the, the recent government initiative, that 7.6 million uh, that was designed to fund, uh, I think it was 2,000 adults into, into employment. There was, there was a focus on autism, but also broader kind of learning disabilities. And um, I think, you know, that, that sounds impressive, doesn't it? But I think if you worked it out, um, it, is, is it about 3.8 thousand per head, you know? How far does that go? How successful might it be? I well, I mean, we we typically that's typically the amount that the, the maximum amount 
that we will fund somebody for. As I say, it's incredibly efficient because we're working with very experienced mentors and all the admin work and the, the, the you know, work monitoring the progress is done by us on a, on a pro bono basis. OK, thank you. And then just switching focus slightly now, Jane, into the, the kind of corporate world. So tell us what you're doing with businesses and, and how you support them with resources and, and better understanding of autism. Well, we pre-COVID, we were holding quite regular roundtables in person, sort of every two to three months. Each one would be hosted by one of our corporate contacts, and quite often law firms, because I'm a former lawyer myself. And we would gather together our contacts, which are really people within sort of HR, DNI, or line managers who um, have an interest in improving in, uh, opportunities, inclusion for uh, neurodivergent members of staff. So we would meet together, we would um, each time pick, pick a particular topic to focus on, and that might be reasonable adjustments, it might be how to adjust your recruitment process, it might be internships. And we would typically get one of our autistic um, colleagues um, who speak at that event, and perhaps one of our, our mentors as well, who, who as I say, work with individuals at, and provide training to employers. And then they would do a presentation and, and, and um, we would um, have, sort of have a panel discussion afterwards. And those have been very helpful. Um, they've worked with people like Goldman Sachs, Credit Suisse, um, Invesco, um, uh, Capita, and sort of big, and, and, and Herbert Smith as well in terms of law firms. So big organisations um, within, um, within, typically within the city. If you, you are missing out on a real pool of talent, if you don't, um, ensure that autistic and neurodivergent people can access employment with you and you are um, you will not um, you, you will harness and you will enable your own existing employees to thrive if you create an environment where they are comfortable to ask for adjustments they might need and uh, I mean a, a huge thing for me and it seems fairly obvious from the whole from the actual definition of neurodiversity People really want to avoid groupthink, and you're only going to do that if you employ people who think differently. Um, and, in, and, and creating an atmosphere in which um, neurodivergent people can thrive um, is key to that. And it's key for the rest of your staff as well. And, and actually, I was at a, the, the Law Society's first neurodiversity um, event last, um, last week. And one of the law firms there said, actually, for the last couple of years, what we've been doing, when we put a new, new team together, the litigation department we have a one note document where everybody puts in their preferred working practices not just the autistic members of the team everybody and you know that's been enormously successful with them um and i would just say to the the really large membership of neurodiversity in business we've got around uh, four to five hundred organizations on board so my email is just jane at autismforward.org.uk so absolutely do do get in touch with me directly well, we appreciate your time today, Jane, and uh, good luck with all of your future success. Uh, continue helping all of those hundreds of people. And um, to, to our audience, thank you for uh, uh, dialing in and listening again today. And we'll look forward to seeing you again in a, in a few days.